Hello, if you're thinking of buying a second-hand electric car, how do you know what you're buying? And particularly, how do you know what condition the main traction or high voltage electric battery is in? You can't tell by just looking at the car, so how do you make a decision? In this video I'm going to talk about two things. Firstly, how I made a decision in buying our second-hand UK Ionic Electric, which is a November 2016 model that we bought in January 2018. And how could you kind of present information and what information would you present to be useful for people trying to buy second-hand electric cars about the battery in particular. So if you're looking to buy any kind of used car, petrol, diesel, electric, whatever, there are certain things that you will want to know. You'll want some reassurance about the sort of condition that it's in, that the information in the advert is honest and accurate and so on, in terms of, you know, mileage, uh, interior and exterior condition, uh, condition of the mechanical components, um, you know, service history, all these kind of things, finance checks, uh, write-off checks, whether it's been in major collisions, rebuilt, two cars welded together, all these kind of things. With an electric car, you've got a major component in the form of the high voltage or traction battery in the electric car that provides the power to drive it that's expensive to replace if something has gone wrong. It's a component that you know will degrade over time, like all lithium ion batteries, but you don't necessarily know how much and how much that will affect you and the price you're willing to pay for a vehicle. And even when you switch on the car, most cars, even like Nissan Leafs, like we used to lease that have some sort of indication, won't tell you a great deal of quality information about the state of health of a battery in an electric car. So first then I'll go through my situation with our Ionic Electric. So we tried to get one uh, new or lease one new in early 2017, but going to a Hyundai dealer, there was a long waiting list and the prices we were quoted for leases were ridiculous, so we left it for some time. Luckily then we saw this very rare advert for a fairly reasonably priced Ionic Electric. By that point, because I'd been interested in Ionics before, I'd done some reading about them and I'd watched some of Bjorn Nilon's videos and other videos online and come to the conclusion that because the battery has a kind of buffer, it was probably in reasonable health. Even if it hadn't been handled perfectly, it was probably okay. But this is just guesswork really, and a lot of this process is just guesswork. When we started inquiring about this particular Ionic, this second-hand Ionic Electric, um, we found out that it basically had, had two owners, um, the owner of a garage chain, and then it had been, you know, sold onto the garage chain ready for sale. So not really two owners, but two owners legally. Basically, the owner had been using it for commuting and commuting, I think, about 70 miles there and back on a daily basis. So, you know, it hadn't been kind of left seemingly for long periods, you know, sitting at 100% or sitting at low um, states of charge. And it had maybe not been, you know, sitting there um, being used for small test drives and so on and then recharged to 100%, but it had probably been used pretty much like a normal car. And it seemed like the owner of the garage was a kind of bit of a Hyundai enthusiast and was getting all the latest models because apparently he'd just put in an order for the plug-in uh, hybrid Ionic, which at that time was only just coming out. So this was a kind of informal history of the car. We did, you know, other checks on the car, the normal kind of ones you do about, you know, outstanding financing, number of owners, any other problems kind of registered with the car. And that came back clean. And then when we were kind of looking at the car to test drive it, uh, because we had to kind of heat it up, I've got a separate video on kind of iciness with the car and, and how we were impressed by how quickly it de-iced. And with that, we could actually see that it had been set on a kind of commuting uh, preheating schedule. So it was a kind of like a, a weekday uh, schedule for setting off in the morning and coming back. So that kind of reassured us that it had been used as a kind of commuter vehicle. Um, so it seemed okay. So we kind of took the leap, really, because in a Hyundai Ionic Electric, there's no other information about the state of health of the battery at, at all. You know, there will always be the bars to indicate um, how much it's actually charged, but the state of charge and the state of health are two different things. State of charge is just, you know, how much the actual capacity of the battery that's left is charged, which can be 100%, even if that's, you know, 80% of the, the original capacity of the battery itself when the car was manufactured or whatever. It's only after you've kind of bought it and used it regularly, something might show up about whether there's a problem with it. And, you know, I never kind of understood that there could be a problem with Ionix because they do have this buffer above 100%. So they have a 31 kilowatt hour battery, only 28 kilowatt hour of which is usable. So they have this top buffer to kind of absorb any slow degradation over time so it's not revealed to the user. I looked a lot online and there aren't many reports of any kind of degradation in Ionics. So a very long story, but in a nutshell, I think I got lucky. I got an, an Ionic that had probably been fairly well cared for, used pretty much as a normal commuter vehicle, and the battery 
you know, seems fine. But that's not really good enough, is it? There should be some kind of standard metric that is either available in car or is available to you as a purchaser of a car, you know, to know what state the battery is in, some indication of how it's been used and what implications that might have for the price you're prepared to pay for the vehicle and, you know, the, the future life, the future lifespan of the vehicle. There's no real way of finding any of this information out. You don't know what state the battery was in when you bought the car, even from new. Hyundai apparently won't tell you that. And you don't get any kind of battery health report when you have an Ionic serviced. There are apps that you can put into the onboard diagnostic port in, uh, in most electric cars. And if you've got compatible software in an app or so on, you can find out a little bit more um, in some cases quite a bit more, about what's actually going on in the battery. So with the Nissan LEAF, for instance, you have got an in-car indication of the battery state of health, separate from the state of charge, which is a number of bars that kind of tick down over time as the battery degrades. You can also get various kind of LEAF apps that work with an onboard diagnostic port, an OBD um, dongle, and you can find out lots of kind of information. Now the main information is the state of health. So you can actually get some indication of, you know, what that is compared to 100%, even though, you know, you don't necessarily know that it was manufactured and, and produced at 100%, but it, it gives you some indication. So you've got some idea of how much it's degraded depending on mileage and just, you know, time since production. Yeah, so I think these apps are great for enthusiasts, but, you know, that is exactly what they are. They're kind of enthusiasts or hobbyists tool or people who are really trying to hypermile and get the most uh, out of their cars without, you know, worrying about running out of, of energy and so on. I don't think these are kind of mainstream things and they're certainly not the kind of things that are going to end up um, in kind of onboard infotainment or instrument systems in cars. You know, they're not going to show you this kind of complexity of information. Might be nice to have it there under some kind of advanced settings, obviously. I mean, I'm always for more data about things is useful. Um, but this, you know, is useful, but I don't think it's the answer for the kind of problem that I'm talking about in this video. There's a kind of much more fiddly equivalent for Ionix, where you use the Talk Pro app, I believe it is, plus some software that you can download. There's a Dropbox link somewhere. But it does give you a whole host of information, like you can see here in this YouTube channel, um, where the information from this app has been overlaid on some driving footage. It's an incredible level of information. And among the things you can find out in this app is the state of health. So you could imagine one thing that you could have as any kind of report on a car, either from a third party or from the, you know, the person you're buying it from, a percentage state of health as a number. So for the average purchaser, what would that mean to you? A kind of percentage number of state of health. So presumably higher is good and lower is bad, but you know, how would that translate into any kind of negotiation? You know, an, an owner of the car selling it to you might sort of dispute, oh, well, it's 95%, that's very good. And depending on how informed you are, you might be able to negotiate or not. So then you might think, okay, well, maybe some sort of traffic light system where, you know, some reporting maybe based on state of health, maybe based on, you know, other factors such as number of times it's been, you know, quick charged or trickle charged or, you know, depth of charges or number of charging events over time. You know, somehow you could work this into some sort of indicator to give you, you know, red in terms of, you know, poor condition, uh, yellow or orange as average and green as excellent, something like that. Would that be useful? I'm not sure. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Or you could go into the kind of finer detail of having different categories of events, you know, either as some sort of, um, I believe with things like the Leaf apps, you can actually get the number of, you know, slow charging and rapid charging events. And I think uh, Nissan engineers, when they plug into cars, can get all sorts of other information about, you know, time it's been left at a high state of charges, number of times it's been charged from, you know, a fairly high state of charge after being charged, which is not good for that particular battery and so on. How many pieces of information would be useful? And again, would you give them as a number? You know, is that out of context? Does that mean anything? Or would you put it in some sort of traffic light system? How many of these things would you add in? Would you make some sort of composite indicator, bringing you back to a single traffic light or single number again? And if you dig into some of these apps, like the Leaf apps, you'll also see other numbers apart from the state of health and the number of charging events and so on, like this one called GIDS. It turns out that they're actually named after the person who first sort of got into the sort of onboard diagnostic systems of Nissan Leafs. So it's a Gary Giddings, which is where the GID comes from. And apparently there was a kind of, you know, a, a unit in the car system that is roughly about 80 watt hours. So, you know, the GIDS in a... Leaf app reading a Nissan Leaf battery is not a universal, you know, SI unit 
to sort of understand batteries whatsoever. Now, finding that out made me do a bit more digging, and I found this uh, EC, European Commission, Joint Research Centre Energy Unit kind of report. Now, this actually says, I'll read it out from the screen here, Specific to traction batteries in EVs, there is no commonly agreed definition for durability of the battery, and therefore clear definitions for various terms such as ageing, degradation, state of health, and cycle life. All of these need to be agreed. There's no standard definitions internationally for those things, and not even within some regions of the planet. So even when you see kind of percentages for state of health and so on, um, in the app or if you manage to get it from you know a servicing team or a garage somewhere it's not a standardized thing in terms of what it means and there's no kind of standardized measure as yet as to what is acceptable or good or bad um, degradation degradation over time degradation by forms of use by temperature of usage and so on so you know i think the whole situation is a real mess if there's something out there that i haven't discovered that covers this some simple metric that you know you can sort of easily get about a car that you're looking to buy and is significant and meaningful for that car in terms of giving you reassurance and putting you in a good bargaining position to sort of see whether you're willing to pay that price or not, please let me know. Now, back when we had a Nissan Leaf, when it was serviced each year, we did get a kind of battery health report that gave a kind of, you know, zero to five stars uh, report on different categories. But again, from looking online, I've seen that, you know, you can get a five star battery report even when your battery's not in a very good condition in a Nissan Leaf. So even though it might be reassuring, say if you own the car and you're worried about the condition of the battery, or if you're looking to buy one and you look at one of these kind of um, battery health reports, I think the information is of limited use. It's of some use, but it's of limited use. Now, one thing I did come across while putting this video together with this great website called Flip the Fleet. So um, I hope they don't mind me showing a few of their graphs here, but they're actually tracking Nissan Leafs specifically and, you know, the battery state of health and the, the number of battery bars, which is the bit on the side of the actual state of charge you see in a Nissan Leaf instrument cluster. And they're kind of showing you here kind of, you know, where the sort of most of the um, batteries are in, the, the condition of most, the majority of the batteries, and then they go down to the kind of outliers, the kind of fifth percentile. So these are the ones in the worst condition, but they're off the main distribution. But there's this incredible scatter plot that they've got to show the um, degradation of the 30 kilowatt hour Nissan Leafs. So this is not the current body shell and current battery size, um, but the earlier ones, and the original 24 kilowatt hours. And the 24 kilowatt hours, you know, they degrade quite a lot, it seems, but the 30 kilowatt hours degrade even faster, according to this data anyway. And just to be clear, the main batteries in electric cars, the lithium ion batteries that most of them have these days, you know, they are getting better, they are fairly robust, but how they've been used does have an effect on, you know, how their longevity, how long they will last, their durability, and on their current state of health, and whether they will retain the levels of charge that they once did, or that they kind of advertised as having in a kind of car advert. So, you know, you know what you're getting in terms of predictable range and so on. So, you know, they can be treated badly, they can degrade more or less depending on how they're treated, so it is important to have some kind of measure of state of health. Over time, as more of these cars are on the kind of used market, this kind of thing is going to come up, I think, more often, and certainly, you know, there's already a lot of awareness issues and, and uncertainties and confusion around electric cars in the car market generally and among dealers. You know, is it time for something standardized to be developed? Is there already something out there? Let me know. So thanks for sticking with me, and please subscribe if you'd like to see more videos from me, and bye for now.